So how many of you have ever been vaccinated? Probably just about everybody from things like the flu or tetanus, polio. And what do these diseases all have in common? Well, it turns out that in every case, a very small number of strains of the disease is responsible for all the infections. That is a good thing. That means that if you can create a vaccine for just those few strains, you can protect billions of people. So why don't we have a vaccine for the common cold? Well, it's because colds are created by hundreds of different strains, each of which mutates, and so over time you end up with millions of strains, and it's completely impractical to create a different vaccine for each strain. Imagine if the next time you went to the doctor, you had to get 100,000 shots. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Now, as it turns out, the same general principles apply to protecting your computer from digital pathogens like spyware, viruses, targeted attacks. Digital vaccines, uh, we call them fingerprints in the industry, are extremely effective at protecting against attacks that are widespread and don't change a lot. The problem is that attackers have stepped up their game, and today's attacks are a lot more like the common cold. In fact, attackers today are generating hundreds of millions of highly mutated threats, and each of these threats is only affecting a small number of people across the world. So in this world, digital vaccines are a complete non-starter. So the question is, how can we protect you against this new breed of threats? How can we protect your computer against an entirely mu new mutated strain of malicious software that we have never seen before and which is only on two or three other computers in the world? Well, we first started thinking about this problem a few years ago, and our first idea was maybe we could somehow leverage the wisdom of the crowds. Maybe we could somehow ask our users to rate the safety of all of the software on their computers on a scale of 1 to 10, and then we'd use these ratings to figure out what was good and what was bad. Well, as you might imagine, this idea was a total non-starter. Uh, people use their computers, they don't want to spend time rating software, they want to watch videos of dancing cats. <laughs> so much for that idea, and so much for hundreds of other bad ideas that went nowhere. And I can tell you that at the time, we were genuinely worried. The fingerprinting approach that had been our staple for two decades in the industry was getting less effective day by day, and there was no obvious alternative in sight. And then one day, as we were mining through the anonymous security telemetry that is sent to us by hundreds of millions of users who elect to do so, we discovered something interesting. It turned out that we had some users who com whose computers hardly ever got infected. These people seemed to have a sixth sense for avoiding malware and staying clean. We had another set of users, even more helpful to us, who seemed to get infected all the time. We didn't know why, but out on the internet, they constantly ran into trouble. They had really bad hygiene. <laughs> and that's when it hit us, that what we really needed to solve our problem was not the wisdom of the crowds, but rather their ignorance. The ignorance of the crowds. Some people might say that's one resource that we have in endless supply. <laughs> If only we could harness it to solve world peace. And in fairness, ignorance is too strong a word. I think the right word here is naivete. So the question is, how can we leverage the inherent wisdom and naivete of hundreds of millions of users to protect against the latest threats? Well, imagine we could conduct an experiment where we've got 100 million users who we sign up, who are willing to help us, people who install lots of software off the Internet. And let's suppose that one day two brand new files appear on the Internet that we've never seen before. So how could any security software possibly tell you whether either of these files is safe or whether it's best avoided? Well, let's imagine now that we could somehow monitor which of our volunteers adopt each of the files and which volunteers avoid it. What would that tell us? Well, let's say that one of the files was adopted by lots and lots of people whose computers hardly ever got infected, people who had really good internet hygiene. That would tell us that statistically, the file is likely to be safe. And let's suppose that the other file is used primarily by people whose computers get infected all the time, people with really bad internet hygiene. Well, that tells us that statistically, the file is likely to be bad. And so now, by harnessing the wisdom 
and naivete of hundreds of millions of anonymous volunteers, users, along with some clever big data algorithms, we can derive extremely accurate safety ratings for every file on the planet, as well as protect you against the latest targeted attacks. And this approach is called reputation-based security. So I hope I've left you with a couple of uh, ideas to think about tonight. The first is that it is amazing the kinds of problems that you can solve with big data. And second, and maybe more importantly, wisdom is overrated. Sometimes what you really need is more ignorance, <laughs> especially when it comes to protecting against the latest attacks on the Internet. Thank you. <laughs>